All right, so check your answers. Hopefully you got them all right. Okay, this should be review. So if you're struggling, you need to come in for help when I get back. All right, next page. Check your answers. Hopefully, you can write all these. Whatever they're called, word problems. This is day seven of your notes, so these are on day seven. Okay, we need to figure out what goes down here to make this true. So if you're giving this on the test, just flip these and do 16x to the fourth, y to the seventh, over 4x cubed, y, 10. Then you do a little simplification. You got four up top. Okay, these x's cancel, you get x up top. These cancel, you get over y cubed, which is 4xy to the negative 3. And lo and behold, there it is. And these are day 7 notes, it's right at the top there. Over here, these, if you notice, okay, now it's not exactly a complex conjugate, but very similar. So, do a foil, you get i squared times 7, because the root 7 times root 7 gives you what's inside. You get minus 8i root 7 plus 8i root 7. Minus 64. Oh my goodness. Cancel, cancel. We know this is negative 1 times 7. Minus 64. Negative 7 minus 64 is negative 71. Okay, once you know that these guys are canceled out, you can cross out B. And you know that it's I squared and not I, so you can cross out A. You're left with two choices. Hopefully you do your math right. All right, day seven, we're doing powers of powers. So it's one step up from yesterday. So day seven, power of a power. So it's like this. 
all you do is you multiply, multiply the exponents. Okay, you have to keep the base, but you multiply the exponents. So if we look right here, okay, we're multiplying the exponents. So two times three, this is really two to the three times two power, or two to the sixth. Okay, this this should be review. You should have seen this before. Same thing here. We have x to the fourth to the third power. So you multiply these exponents. This is x times four to the four times three, which is x to the twelfth. Okay, number three, we have y to the third to the five x power. This is, you just multiply the exponents, so y times y to the three times five x, which is really y to the 15 x power. Now it's weird, but that's what you get. So the power of a product. So inside these parentheses, we have products. So you just multiply the exponents of each term. So over here, our first term is going to be negative. Okay, this negative is not with the m. So it's negative m to the 7 times a power times n to the 1 times a power is really m to the 56, n to the 8. All right, we look at 5. This 4 is not in there, so we'll leave them out. This is really, okay, we have to multiply the exponent of each term in here. So 3 to the 1 times 2, times x to the 5 times 2. This is really 3 squared times x to the 10th. A little more simplification, last step, 36x to the 10th. Number six, no parentheses. This negative is not with this y. It's not in there. So this is just right there. That's it. It was a trick. So this one looks real complicated. Let's start with this, our left quantity. So we get 3 squared, y times that, which is really 9y to the 12th. Now over here, this negative is not associated with any of these, okay? It's not inside any of the x, y, or z. So this is going to be a negative x times 5 times 3, y 2 times 3, z cubed. We get negative x to the 15, 
y to the sixth, z to the third. Okay. Now we multiply, okay, we distribute this, you get a negative nine. No x's we can deal with, so it's just x to the 15. Our y's, okay, now we're multiplying the bases and we have some exponents, so we'll, what we do with them is we just add our exponents now. So this is y to the 18th. And then we have our z. Nothing going on with z. Quotient over power. So when we're doing powers of powers, we multiply them together. Okay, we add them together. This time with a quotient, we're going to subtract the exponents. Okay, you subtract the exponents. So generally, you do top minus the bottom. Okay, or whatever is bigger. So over here, okay, same base, you can, you can deal with the exponents. You subtract 9, 9 minus 5, so this will give you 7, let's cancel it out, 9 minus 5 gives you 4. Okay, 7 to the 4th. Over here, we deal with the number, so h divided by 2 is 4. We do top minus bottom, so 7 minus 3 gives you m to the 4th. Take a look at number 10. We worry about the numbers first, so this would be negative something over 3. Look at our exponents, so WW, same base, we can deal with these exponents. So you do 6 minus 5, so W up top. Then we have X's and X's. So you do 4 minus 6, so you can think of it as X. So you can think of this as negative one-third times w times x to the negative second power. Okay. Another way of writing this is negative w up top. Okay, that's canceled out. That's canceled out. Since this six is bigger, this guy cancels out, and you're left with two of these down here. You got your three. So these are both the same thing. Just different ways of writing them. Okay, now we're doing power of a quotient. So basically, now you just multiply the exponents, and then you subtract. Okay, that's basically all you do. If you can subtract, sometimes you can't. So come over here, we got 
x, we have 4 times 3, so this is x to the 4 times 3 over y to the 2 times 3, which is really x to the 12th, y to the 6th. Over here, we have this whole thing to the fourth power, so this is going to be 4 to the fourth, m squared, times, or m to the 2 times 4 power, we have 12 to the fourth, n to the 5 times 4 power. If you didn't see this before, what you can do before that is to simplify in here to make your life a little easier. Okay, So if you were to simplify, you would get, okay, cancel that, cancel that, you get a 3. So you get m, 2 to the 4th, 2 times 4, 3 to the 4th, okay? That's if you simplify it. This one, this three to the fourth is a lot easier to figure out than these numbers. Okay, so let's go with the simplified version just so we don't have to use our calculator. We have m to the eighth. Three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 80, 81, and to the 20th power. So whenever you're in here, it's always best to simplify before you come up with some crazy looking fraction. So now we have a quantity being squared inside of a quantity being squared. It's coreception. So we have to do inside this parenthesis first. We get 6ab cubed over, this is going to be 4 squared, a to the 3 times 2, b squared. And this whole thing is squared. go through this, let's just simplify one more step. A to the 6, B squared. Squared. Okay. Let's see if we can simplify this inner part. So we can factor out something here. We can divide these by 2 so you get 3 and 8. We can get rid of some of these a's, so he cancels. You can think of this as 1 minus 5, or 1 minus 6. We can cancel them out, so you have a a to the 5th down here. Over here, we have b and b, so 3 minus 2. This cancels, that cancels out, so you have 3b over 8a to the 5th squared. And all I did here is I canceled out our exponents using either 1 minus 6, which gives you to the negative 5, or it's to the 5th down below. Okay, or just knowing you just cancel them out every, for every one you get. So, let's square this. We get 3 squared, b squared, over 8 squared, a to the 5 times 2. So it's really just 9, b squared, over 64, a to the 10th. I 
don't believe you can simplify this. Oops, nope. Okay, can't simplify it. But this is your answer. Okay, but the trick is to do this inner parenthesis first, and then you do the outer one. You just got to know how to cancel out exponents. Okay, now we got negative and zero exponents. So a negative exponent just basically switches you to the top or the bottom, basically. Okay? So it's still like two, so two to the negative three is really, two to the negative three is really one over two to the third. Okay? which is, we did this earlier, 1 eighth. Okay, so if you have a negative exponent in the denominator, so if this was 1 over 2 to the negative 3, this would really be 2 to the third. Okay, it just flips your Numerator or denominator, flips your place. So let's go to this one, same base, they're multiplying, so we add these two, so this is really five minus nine, which is three to the negative four, which is really one over three to the fourth. We have this one, just like our quotient product rule thing. You do the top minus the bottom. So this is 5 to the 9th minus the 11th, which is 5 to the negative 2, or 1 over 5 squared. Now you'd want to actually simplify these, but Right now, all that matters is you know, if you have a negative, you just go to the bottom or you go to the top, you just flip your place. So over here, we have one over six to the negative two, which means he goes to the top. So it's really six to the two. Same thing over here, he goes to the top, so it's really just y cubed. So when you flip top and bottom, you lose the negative sign. Okay, we're going to simplify these and no negative exponents. So, okay, same bases. So we just, 3 minus 8, which is x to the negative 5. Or 1 over x to the fifth. Okay, that's your answer. Number 20, we're going to go, we're same base for the a's, so you add the exponent, so a cubed. You have this b, so same base, 
So this is going to add them, so 3 minus 4, which is really a cubed b to the negative 1. This b is going to flip. So you get a cubed over b. Okay, 21, we can, we can factor out these numbers, simplify these numbers. Uh, by 3, you get negative 4 over 5. We have, and what I would do is I would flip this down here. So you have W2, W4. Up here we have X cubed. We're going to flip this X to the fifth, bring him up here. We have z to the fourth, z to the fourth. And that's what I would do. You could do w minus 4, or minus 4 minus 2. They all get you the same thing. When you do this, you get negative 4. Same basis, so we can add them together. Negative 4, x to the eighth. z to the fourth over z to the fourth, these guys canceled. Down here we got 5, same base, so we add the exponents. 2 plus 4 gives you 6. Okay. The other way you could have done this, let's say it's negative 4 fifths times w to the negative fourth minus 2, x to the 3 minus negative 5, and then z to the fourth minus 4. If you want to do it this way, you'd get negative 4 fifths, negative 4, let me give you w to the negative 6, x to the positive 8, z to the 0. You know, anything to the zero power is one. When you have to flip this guy, he goes down. So negative four, x8, five, w6. Okay? You get the same thing if you flipped them first and then went through, or if you did the quotient rule thing and then flipped them later. It all works. Okay, lastly, 9 to the 0 equals, you should know anything to the 0 power equals 1. Always. 0 to the 0 power equals 1. Okay, anything to the zero power equals one. So on your homework, it's just using all these product, power, quotient, rules, okay? A lot of stuff going on here. And just do your best.